Hi everybody. Thank you for coming out on this lovely Sunday and sharing your afternoon with me. Uh, it's not my birthday anymore, but I'm still super excited to play a concert for you. So this shouldn't be such a long program. Um, uh, yesterday, our run through took three hours, but that was because everything went wrong. Uh, we probably have 45 minutes for you. So I hope you find it a worthwhile way to spend 45 minutes of your time. Uh, Kevin, I'm not going on the hoop, but you got to stay watching. I promise. It's worth it. Uh, okay, the first piece I'm going to play is Astrologer's Image Consultant Professional Occupations in Advertising. And this is a piece I wrote in October. I was taking a class called Z Festival Unacademy in um, contemporary music and chamber music. And one of the things I had to do was write a piece, which I don't write a whole lot of music, so this was an adventure for me. But another thing I wanted to do was learn how to use Max MSP. Max MSP is a programming language for audio programming. Not, not uniquely audio programming, but it's good for this kind of thing. And I wanted to learn how to use it, so I created a piece in it using various kinds of delay effects and um, reverb and echoes. So I'm going to play that now. And I hope you like it. It's not very long. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm no judge of contemporary music and no one can judge their own material. But I think it's one of the cooler things I've done. I definitely want to keep on playing it until I get it right.
Chelsea. Thank you, everybody. That was Astrologer Image Consultant Professional Occupations in Advertising. Oh, I don't, I don't offer any of those services. Um, I, okay, the title comes from when I, when um, the federal government switched over from CERB to CRB. They uh, made everybody apply for it through the EI system, and that really uh, uh, encourages you to take um, a, a career survey or something to, to demonstrate that you're looking for work. I mean, I, I have been out of work since March, right? Like all, almost all musicians. Um, so the title is uh, the um, various uh, careers that the federal government thought I would be interested in. Uh, they're not that different from playing music, right? I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, we need a moment to set up for the next piece, so uh, stay tuned. Hi again. We're back.
So, uh, thanks everybody for watching, by the way. Artisan Woodcarver. Oh, thanks, Ron. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Dory. Yeah, it's a fun piece to play. Uh, I, yeah, I enjoyed creating it. Oh, I can see myself looking down. You can all see my bald spot. Hi. Uh, <laughs> okay, the next piece I'm gonna play, this is a really cool piece. This is, came from a, a really neat project that Claude um, uh, Le Palm did earlier this summer where he basically said online he would write a piece for any of his friends or colleagues that wanted one. And so, of course, I, I wrote in and I said, please, you know, write me something. And he wrote this piece for me. And this is in the style of the Britain Metamorphoses. This is Mitting, Missing Metamorphosis number two. Asis, who murdered by Polyphemus, was transformed into a river. Asis is the Asis from... Um, uh, oh, what's the name of the nymph? I don't remember. I don't remember the name of the nymph in this story. Anyway, she's, she's the one who does the magic. And uh, Polyphemus is a, a cyclops. And in fact, in fact, he, he desires the nymph for um, his own. And he's jealous of Asus, so he murders Asus. And this, the Polyphemus, if for, for reference, is also the... Cyclops in the Odyssey. So this is why he's in such a bad mood when he meets Odysseus. And in the Metamorphoses, in the Ovid Metamorphoses, this story is told by the nymph as she's recounting, oh, what an awful time I've had. Oh, what an awful year I've had to Diana. How she fell in love and how her lover was murdered and how all she could do to remember him was to turn him into a river that comes from this mountain spring. Galatea. Galatea. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Michelle. Yes, it's Galatea. I don't know why her name just escaped me for a second. Thank you so much. Yes, that's her. Um, she, anyway, um, Asus is murdered by Polyphemus dropping a mountain on him. And um, uh, the, um, the way that uh, uh, Galatea brings him partially back to life is by causing us a, a watery her, her she's a water nymph her element is water so she causes a stream to come from the mountain and that's how she brings him back a little bit um and so you can look for that in this piece and there's one more thing every other piece in this program has some interesting bit of audio processing that's happened so um asis in french solfege is A and Cis, which is C sharp. So, and Claude indicated this in the music. Um, so Claude, I've done a little thing to your piece and I hope you don't mind, I think it's very appropriate. Just a tiny touch of uh, audio processing because I'm doing it anyway for everything on the program. Uh, just a tiny touch of an effect, of an ACES effect that I think is appropriate for this piece and I hope you like it.
Thank you. Thanks. Okay, now everybody, please welcome your special guest artist for the afternoon. Chelsea Mandrusiak, my wife and aerial hoop artist. Come on in, Chelsea. We are going to perform one of Britain's six metamorphoses, which Asis was based on. Uh, this one is Niobe. I just need to make sure I have the right instrument and the right reed here. Niobe, you ready? Yeah. Niobe, who lamenting the death of her 14 children, was turned into a mountain.
Ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea Mandrusiak, Ariel Hoop. Chelsea's off changing, but she says thank you. Wasn't that great? I was so happy I could watch a little bit this time. Okay, the next piece on the program is a classic piece by Arvo Pert. And this is something I've wanted to play for a long time, but never had the chance. Uh, so I finally put it together to make it work. And this is a, a violin and piano piece, I think, originally. And I, learning to play this, no, not even learning, like, like, like muddling my way through the piano part gives me, has given me respect for piano players. I'm going to play it on English horn. This is Possibly the first concert where I've ever played all three instruments, at least without an intermission to change. This piece is something else. It's, uh, I hope it's, I, I think it's an experience to listen to. Uh, it's definitely an experience to play.
Thank you, everyone. I see the camera has gone a little bit out of focus. I can fix that before we play the Mozart. I have one piece left. I love playing that piece so much. It's a meditative experience. Um, you can play it on a lot of different instruments, but it exposes every little detail in your technique. The, the time, well, you've heard, you heard. I require a lie down. I'm going to go have a nap, but first I'm going to play the Mozart concerto. But first I'm going to fix my reed, and then I'm going to play the Mozart concerto. Hi, it, the camera should be better now. Yeah, birthday nap. Thanks, Liz. Okay. The last piece on the program is, of all the music, the thing here that I've been playing for the longest and that I know the best. But this year, this is a piece that shows up on professional auditions all the time, and I have to play whether I like it or not. Good thing, it's actually really good. Um, I wanted to work on it in a different way this year, so I did a different thing with it, and I hope you like it. Here we go, I'll meet you at the end. Thank you. 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, John. Thanks, Quinn. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this was so much fun to put together, and I'm really glad that I got to play this all for you. We've had so few concerts since the start of COVID, and this was a real treat. Was that your cadenza? Oh, uh, some people were asking about the cadenza. The cadenza is based on the one by John Delancey, but I modified it. My, my system is I started with one that I liked, and every time I play this piece, I change something. <laughs> Thanks, Vic. Uh, yeah, the first violin part for this is quite hard. Uh, it was fun to record. I know the piece a lot better now that I've done this. I recommend who, anyone who really wants to learn a piece of music, play all the parts, especially if it's something you'd like. Um, I, I need to thank everyone who helped with today. I need to say a huge thank you to my wife, Chelsea, for her hoop performance, but also for helping with the logistics and setup, and also for putting up with me while I've been stressing about this all week. I need to thank Claude for his wonderful piece. Um, I need to thank Jenny Vett for permission to use the art that is on the wall behind me. And I need to thank all of you for coming and listening. Did you make the parts? Sorry? Did you, take them? Did you make the parts? You'll have, Chelsea's asking me a question. Did someone have a question about did I make all the parts? Uh, I, um, I, I wrote out all the parts for the Mozart from the score. There are eight. There's um, uh, five string parts and four wind parts in that concerto. That concerto is scored for um, violin, second violin, first violin, second violin, viola, uh, cello, bass, two oboes, and two horns. And I made the cello and bass part, I combined the cello and bass part into one, and I played it on English horn, and I used an effect on the computer to transpose it down an octave. And I played the viola part on English horn, and I played the second violin part on English, on, I played uh, three uh, parts, three of me between the two violin parts, because the violins sometimes play double stops, and you can't do that on, on oboe. So there's an English horn, and then two oboe parts for the, for the two violin parts. And then two oboe parts for the oboe parts and then one English horn part for the two horn parts. I found I didn't need to record a second part for that. And then the solo, of course. Oh, Matt, I don't have an encore. I'm so sorry I don't have an encore. This, my chops are dead. I could not play another note. I'm so glad I didn't try to add another piece because this is, this is as much as I can play. However, I have started on another uh, play all the parts on oboe project and it will be Finishing up, I'll be running it in the On Wednesdays group sometime January, February, and I'll be preparing another performance of it. And uh, just a clue, it, uh, no, I, sorry, Matt, I can't do Baby Shark. Uh, Chelsea vetoed that one. <laughs> I won't tell you exactly what she said, but believe me, I'm not going to play Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't play, I, oh, Mahler. Okay, the thing I'm working on is by Sibelius. I'll leave it at that. Uh, uh, Matt, I would love to do some Leonard Cohen songs. Um, yes, I may get to doing some Leonard Cohen songs as well. Uh, I'm gonna sign off now. I'm gonna go, uh, 
have a snack, and then a nap. It's been so nice to play for all of you. I hope to see you again soon. Also, I saw all of your nice comments about the hoop. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for all of your uh, encouragement and support. And we'll do this again soon. Bye.